Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to revise some more important questions in Java. In my previous video, I had told you about the first three chapters. In this uh, video, I'm going to show, tell you about the different operators, what are, their, uh, what are the questions that have come in the chapter class as basis of all computations. Okay, let us start the uh, video session now. The first question, which has been frequently repeated in your exam is, what do you mean by type conversion? Name the two types of conversions in Java. The process of converting one data type into another data type is known as type conversion. So if you write this one line, you get one mark. And they've asked you name the two types of conversion in Java. So name. So you just need to mention the uh, type conversion. One is called Im implicit type conversion or coercion and explicit type conversion or typecasting. So if you find the spelling coercion difficult, don't need to write that. Just you can just mention it as implicit type conversion and explicit, explicit type conversion. Let us go to the second question now. What is meant by typecasting? This is also an important question. Okay. So here, if you see the difference, the process of converting one data type to another data type by the user's choice. Okay. Here this word user's choice, user's demand or user's intervention. That is the user wants to convert it from one data type to another data type. Then it is known as type casting or explicit conversion. I've given the general form here. First the type and then the expression and also an example here int a float b c and we have converted the int a to float a okay by doing type casting we go to the next question what are keywords given an example it's a quite simple answer for this so keywords are reserved words which have a special meaning to the java compiler that is when the language comes then only uh, along with the compiler you have these keywords only through these keywords we are writing our programs or instructions they cannot be used as identifiers in programs identifiers means you cannot use them as uh, variable names function names etc and some examples have asked you so you can give class in float public any two three examples you can give the next question name any two library packages so here uh, you always start with import java.util java.awt so those are the library packages which starts with the word java in the package name okay so you can give any two names or any four names you remember okay we have java.util java.awt uh, java.lang which is a default package in java Okay, that also was asked as a one mark question in one of the papers, which is the default package in Java. Then you have to answer it as java.lang. And then we have java.awt, java.net, java.swing. There are many packages, library packages in Java. Okay, we'll go to the next question. Differentiate between instance variable and local variable in Java. So instance variables are variables which are declared within a class and are accessed by all the functions available in the class. Okay, and local variables are variables which are declared inside the function or method locally and can be used only within the function. Now, what I mean by that, I'll explain to you in an example. See here, you have, I've given an example here, class number. In this, I've declared a variable int num. So, after the class definition, whatever variables I am declaring, that is known as instance variables. And here I have two math methods. One is accept and another is display so here in the accept method i have declared one more variable p okay which is equal to 45 so here p is known as a local variable because it is available only within this method so if i try to access this p outside this method that is in display if i try to display this p it will give me an error saying p cannot be accessed here is it clear whereas num which i have declared as an instance variable can be accessed all through these methods now I have a question for you here. There is one more type of variable which is used in Java. If you know them, please write it in the, write the definition and the name of the variable in the comment section. That's also important variable. Okay, we'll go to the next question now. Give one point difference between unary and binary operator. Now the word unary means unit is one, university is something we are uh, having some, uh, a single word okay and binary means it is two by the word by is two so here the difference is operators which work on a single operand is known as unary operator for example a is an operand here phi is an operand here so here the operator plus is working on a single operand 
So it is a unary operator. Binary operators work on two operands. So uh, for example, here we have two operands A and B, C and D and we have an operator operating on them. So they are known as binary operators. Okay, we will go to the next question. What is meant by precedence of operator? This is also uh, asked quite a few times. The order in which operators are evaluated in an expression is called precedence of operator. See, in maths, uh, we would have learned the board mass rule. If you remember, bracket of uh, division, multiplication, uh, that rule. But here we call it as the bed mass rule because we have bra bracket, exponent, uh, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. Okay, so here also we follow the same uh, uh, principles. That is, first the parenthesis is evaluated. Then, if you have an exponent, is evaluated. Then you have uh, your uh, increment, decrement uh, operators. So there is a uh, table for that. Here, for this example, I will tell you we have ten plus five into two. So 10 plus 5 into 2 can give me two values. That is 15 in 10 plus 5 is 15. 15 into 2, it will give me 30. Or it can be 10 plus 5 into 2. 5 into 2 will give me 10. So 10 plus 10 will give me 20. So there are two values that is there. But as I told about the rule, the multiplication has a higher precedence than the addition. So the correct answer will be first 5 into 2 will be multiplied. That is 10. And the 10 will be added to this 10. So the correct answer will be 20. Okay, this is important. Please read it in your notes. Uh, here, this statement, write a Java statement to create an object MP4 of class digital. This actually I discussed in my previous video uh, with the uh, syntax and example. Here, if you see this question, they have given you to create a Java statement to create an object MP4 of class digital. So such questions, first you write the general form. So general form is class name object name is equal to new class name. So here, which is the class name here? Class digital. So I write digital here. And then what's the object name? It is MP4. So MP4 is written here, which is equal to new digital. Okay, hope you understood this. It's an easy question. Next, what are identifiers? Yes, how do I identify you? I identify you by identity card. Yes, and then what does, what does it contain? It contains your name. Similarly, Identifiers are the names given to the various programming elements such as variable name, object name, method name, class name, etc. Okay, so this is the simplest answer for this. So whenever this word identifier comes, remember your identity card, remember the word name and then please write this definition as it's given here. Some rules have to be followed while naming the identifiers. Uh, so rules for naming identifiers, first rule, it cannot start with the a digit, it cannot have blank spaces, it should not have keywords. Okay, these are some of the rules while naming the identifiers. Uh, here, I've given you an example. I say class student. Okay, so the name of the class is student. So student is an identifier. Void input, the function name is an identifier. Int A, the variable name is an identifier. OB, object is an identifier. Okay. Is it clear? Now, we we'll go to the next question. Name the types of errors. So, there are three types of errors. One is syntax, next is logical, and third is runtime error. So, the question here is mat.square root 36 minus 45. What is 36 minus 45? It will give you minus 9, isn't it? Now, what is the square root of minus 9? Since it's a negative number, while compiling, it is going to compile correctly. But while running, it is going to give you this output. In a n, that means not a number. Why? Because square root cannot take a negative number. Okay. The next one int a semicolon b semicolon c semicolon. What should it be there? There should be a comma here. So it is a syntax error. Okay. State the number of bytes occupied by char and int data types. So this is also very important because char, int, char, int, float, double, uh, then you have uh, boolean. All these values, you should be knowing the memory size. So here they have asked you char and int. So char is 2 bytes. If it is asked in bits, you have to multiply by 8. So 1 byte is equal to 8 bits. So 2 into 8, you get 16 bits. Int is how much? 4 bytes. That is 4 into 8 is equal to 32 bits. Yes. And we come to the last question here in this video. Write the difference between equal and double equal to operators. It's a very simple question. Yes. 
So equal operator is what? It's an assignment operator. Whereas in Java, double equal to operator is your relational operator. This is used to assign values from right hand side to left hand side. That means when I say a equal to 12, this value 12 is assigned to a. Yes, we have to imagine the variables to be a memory box. And in that I'm putting the value 12. Yes, and here when I am going to have a equal to equal to, it's like your comparison operator, which is going to compare the left hand side and your right hand side. If both are same, you will get the value true. And suppose if I'm having say 10 equal to equal to 5, you get the value false. So we get a Boolean value here. Hope, hope you like this video. If you like, please share and subscribe. And all the best for your upcoming exams. Thank you.